Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and rejoice Visual Studio Code users for the Visual Studio May Drop is here. So if you use Visual Studio Code, go check for updates. Just go on in here, help, check for updates, and you should find the May update. By the way, it does require a restart to check it out, and that's exactly what we are going to do right now. Now, truth be told, the May update is not it's not overwhelming by any means. There's a couple of new features here. The first one I think is very cool. The second one is situational. Uh, and then unfortunately, we've got a lot of co-pilot stuff in here. I kind of wish they would stop doing that. But hey, Microsoft is going to Microsoft. So here we go. Uh, we're going to demonstrate the first new feature. And no, it's not the ability to create text files. That's been here for a while. But instead, what you can now do is multi-select tabs. So I'm using control and I have all three of these selected. So then what I could do is go ahead and close them all at once. Another thing I could do, so we'll go ahead and create multiple tabs again is I could use shift select and select a range of tabs and then you could do something such as bring all of those over to another document. Now I have found some bugs here and I'm going to see if I can actually illustrate it here. If I shift select this range and then close, it only closes one. I don't know why that happens. It happens sometimes, not other times, but the new functionality is definitely nice. So again, you have the ability to uh, use uh, control to select multiple or like so here, like so, or I can select a range using shift and then you can apply an action to all of them uh, at the same time. So uh, if you're working on multiple files, this is definitely going to be an improvement. And one of those core little features that you're kind of shocked that probably wasn't in Visual Studio code already and you're like, why not? Well, that is the case. The next one we have here is the new ability to show uh, functionality by default. So uh, let's go ahead and show you what I mean. So let's go ahead, open up a recent workspace like this guy right here. And this is a uh, just a Visual Studio project. Uh, so I'm going to go in here. We will grab a document. And the big reason why I want this guy here is you'll notice, let's just shut this guy down. We'll drag this task over here. And you'll notice it has this guy available. Now, generally, when you deselect it, those commands go away. So if you want to see the editor actions for a document all the time, there is a new feature here. So again, in focus, nothing. Focus, gone. You want to fix this one, you can now go to uh, the project settings, so preferences, settings, like so. You want to go to Windows. Uh, actually, no, this one we want to search for. So um, editor actions we're going to search for and then what you say is always show editor actions turn that one on like so and now what you will see is when you come in here so here focused you'll see the toolbar is there stays there no matter what you're doing now and honestly i'm not sure that this is an improvement I, I think the old way kind of decluttered but if you have a use case for this let me know but basically you're always going to see toolbars or context sensitive action toolbars for windows even when they're not focused again completely user drivable with that um, editor actions always show editor actions in the settings now we have another new thing here is when you create a new window uh, you can actually have it use a profile so i've already gone ahead and created a profile so over here you'll see profile files. I have the MJF profile, different settings of things. Uh, you can set this thing up, preferences, again, profile, edit profile. You'll see what's being configured over here. And then it stores things like your settings, your keyboard settings, your user settings, user tasks, and so on. Uh, when you create a new one, you can inherit it from an existing profile. So when you have your new profile available, you can now set this up. So when you create a new window, it uses that profile. Uh, it, it has to be a custom creative profile, by the way. Uh, the defaults don't actually show up. So if you want to create a new profile, make sure you inherit it from another one. I also found that when I created a new profile, so I came in here and I added one. We'll see if it does it here today. Uh, my second profile and you can inherit it from something else. So say we're working on Java here, we'll go ahead and create it. Now I'm going to be interested to see if that profile actually shows up because when I did this last time, I had to do a restart of the editor, but when I did it the first time, I did not. So now we've got that here, we're going to go into uh, preferences and then we'll go to settings and then we'll go to window and under window, we have new window. And under new window, there is this new option here, new profile window, and you drag it down and you will see MJF profile is there. What you'll also notice is my new one is not. So again, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll just drop that down. We'll fire back up. And then what you'll notice if I do the exact same thing, preferences, settings, window, new window, active window, my second profile shows up. So sometimes you got to restart after creating a profile. 
Sometimes you don't. I don't know which one is supposed to be the right way. This does seem to be a slightly buggy release, to be honest. I've just found I've, I've found two bugs in like my one hour and a half with this guy already. So uh, that's those are like the highlight new features here. Uh, let's go back on over to the release notes. We'll go through a couple of the other things here, but I think those are the the big new marquee features in this release. Again, editor tabs multi select is definitely nice. So uh, we also have some new accessibility options here, so you can set uh, key bindings from the accessibility help dialog, and you can also set a deep bounce position signal option delays to customize the debouncing time for various accessibility signals. I think it's to keep things from firing too often. You can just configure it now. Again, the big new feature I think is going to be this tab multi-select. So you can use control click or command click on a Mac and then shift click to do a range and you can perform actions on multiple objects at once. Uh, then again, we have the show editor actions. So if something again, uh, not turned on, turned on. Again, the only difference is when it's focused over here, you're seeing the toolbar show up for the active window all the time. Again, I think this is a little cluttery. I'm curious what you ultimately think of this new feature. Next up, we have the ability to disable LCD text as a runtime argument. Although interestingly enough, I can't find this preference. Uh, so I, I can't demonstrate this to you because on my end, I ain't seeing this one. Let me know if this is actually available for you, but you can see the result of disabling LCD text. Uh, so true uh, on the right is false. So this is LCD text uh, disabled. They're using a double negative on me here. So this is a disabled text, not disabled. It comes down to, I guess, what you prefer. Uh, I think we're almost all used. Maybe it's because we're moving beyond LCD now, but I'm not sure exactly what you'd want to do. That's one of those ones probably want to check it out, see if it works for you. And then you have the, when you create a new window, you can have it select the profile. Uh, we've got some improvements to source control. So you've got uh, new um, several workbench commands you can create shortcut keys for, focus on the next or previous source control input field, and focus, focus on the next or previous resource group within a repository. With notebooks, you can now find in a cell selection. Uh, and then uh, down here, terminal, they've removed the canvas renderer. This means that you're either using the DOM if for some reason your machine does not support WebGL 2. Uh, most things should support WebGL 2 at this point in time, unless you're using a pretty antiquated machine, uh, in which case you're using the DOM-based renderer. I'm not sure exactly what you're going to see from the canvas renderer being taken out. Hopefully it's not gonna cause any artifacts for you if you're on an older machine, but it's one of those things to be aware of. Uh, so also we have rescale overlapping glyphs introduces a preview feature in 1.88. It's now enabled by default. This feature rescales glyphs that overlaps following cells that are intended to cover ambiguous uh, width characters, which might have font glyphs that don't match with the back backing PTY Unicode versions of it. So you can see without scaling with scaling. Uh, so the biggest thing you're seeing here, see how the overlap is there. A very niche use case, but yeah. Uh, and then we get into uh, the Copilot stuff. And I ask this every time, and I mostly gloss over the Copilot stuff because honestly, I don't think Copilot should be start part of the Visual Studio Code releases, but obviously this is where Microsoft's making their money and they want you to know about the new features, such as attach context to chat, uh, the, um, uh, the couple other things here too, IntelliSense in uh, chat code blocks available here. Uh, and again, every time I'm going to pretty much gloss over the new copilot features, because I think there's something they're, they're again, a value add trying to think that shouldn't be a core part of the visual studio code release. But I'm curious, do you agree with me on that one as well? But there are definitely some improvements on copilot and probably more actually copilot things than there are other things. And that seems to be a trend and it's a trend I don't like. So anyways, that is it. That's the, the May update. Again, the big new one here is the multi-tab select. So I'm gonna use this as a way to say goodbye, shift select and close. And that's it. Uh, so let me know what you think of this month's update. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.